Hey guys, Tarkat here, and Jonathan has prepared something very special. Now, none of us have seen anything that he's shown us, and this is all very early build stuff, so if anything goes wrong, then it's completely fine, and don't worry. But yeah, Jonathan, thank you very much for coming on. What have you got to share with us today? All right, so I mean, basically what I want to do here is have a bit of a fireside chat, if you will, about Melee and Path of Exile. Um, and uh, it's kind of one of those things where, like, you know, like, for quite a long time, I would say, like, well, in fact, really since the beginning, like, Melee has just not really been as good as we had hoped. And I think that a lot of the reason for that is because we needed to kind of look, go down really, like, at a pretty low level in the game and kind of actually address some of the fundamentals uh, with, like, animation system, like, and, um, like, you know, action system and, like, targeting system, like, all of these different things. And so um, what I'd like to talk to you about today is, like, not so much balance, although balance is like a huge, obviously, element of what we're doing um, with 370, but actually more to do with like, you know, the sort of the types of changes we're making more to the like the systems and, and those sort of low level details and, and in order to make the game a lot better. And what I sort of started doing is I sort of started looking at like um, what other games were doing and like, you know, like playing, playing a bunch of different things and sort of look, and looking at what was going on with that. And um, I sort of found quite surprisingly, like there were a lot of mistakes we're making, just that really basic stuff. So yeah, I'll, I'll just sort of walk you through it. Um, so probably the biggest change and the one that you guys, um, you know, will be most interested in is animation cancelling. So, um, I don't know if you guys know sort of what that is. Basically in PoE, normally when, when, once you start an attack, you're completely committed to that attack. Um, and that's the first sort of major thing that I knew we really had to do, um, if we were going to fix melee. So, uh, in PoE now, obviously, you know, you can do, you can do an attack, but if you start the attack now, you can then just cancel right out of it. Um, if, if it's if it's before the contact point, in which case like you, you barely anything happens, and then if it's after the contact point, um, then we've got this thing where um, uh, if like so basically if there's kind of like damage, uh, you know, this is where we get MS Paint out, right? So if you imagine like the timeline of an attack, um, you've kind of got this portion in the middle where you're like doing the damage, you know, you're like doing the swing. So basically, you can cancel here and you can cancel here, and um, if you cancel before the attack, then you can just launch straight into a different attack. And if you cancel after the contact point then effectively the amount of time that you would have spent uh, doing animation now, you can instead be like running, um, and uh, then you can start your next attack once that natural conclusion of that animation would have finished. Um, so, I mean, it's a little bit hard to show you, but I'll sort of try and go into, in, in, into some attacking. So what you'll notice as I start attacking um, is that uh, when, as an animation finishes, my character can kind of move immediately as soon as the, as soon as the damage has been done. Um, and that actually changes the feel of combat um, quite a lot. So it's like quite a significant change. Um, and here, um, even if I just hold the mouse button down, the game will sort of automatically cancel the attack the moment that the enemy that I'm engaging is, is, is dead. Um, and so that's kind of, you know, like a huge part of the of, of the feel there. So uh, yeah, any, any sort of questions about that at the outset here? How would that function with something like multi-strike? Um, so you can actually cancel. So if I use double strike here, which isn't multi-strike, but sort of similar, you can actually cancel at any time while you're not actively doing damage. Um, so basically, um, like during the, there's, there's a period between uh, the point where you're doing the, the first swing and the second swing, um, where you're able to cancel out of the attack. Um, and so yeah, that's sort of an important one. So yeah, like um, any other questions about sort of that? Uh, how are you controlling this exactly? Um, what do you mean? So basically, uh, okay, so... Uh, so to give you specifics here. So basically, what I can do. So if I if I just click on the on the person, right, it does the full attack with no with no cancel, yep. right? If I'm holding down the mouse button, then the moment that the monster dies, um, the attack auto cancels so long as I've got an action which is further away from what I'm doing, um, the, the, you know, where the mouse is. So like uh, to sort of show it here, like okay, if I've got the mouse over here, um, actually this is another change here. There's actually quite a lot going on with this, but um, yeah, I mean basically. <laughs> And, and so this is what I mean about it being quite hard to explain, because one of the reasons I wanted to do this podcast is I wanted to kind of show like what it was actually like to play. It's actually really hard to get across in like a trailer or like a, you know, like a text post or anything like that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So um, basically uh, at any time you can just click to cancel. Um, well, I shouldn't say at any time. At any time when you're not actually doing the active act damage swing, you can, you can click to cancel. Um, but the game has also auto cancel moments where it will cancel if, yeah, basically, if you're if it if if it can see that you're done with the attack because the monster that you're clicking on has sort of has, has died or or the target ability has been removed, um, so yeah, it just ends up being a, a lot sort of a just a, a lot more responsive to play. Like, and um, I mean, it, it, it's sort of surprising, like just the fact that like um, uh, just the fact that when you're finished doing an attack, that you like if you start the next one. In the past, what would have happened was is that when you started that next attack, 
um, you were completely committed to it. So you kind of do like an extra attack you didn't mean to do at the end of like, you know, oftentimes at the end of combat. And now that's gone because the, um, you know, you can just click away the moment that you're done and, you're, and, and the character will just be ripped away from doing it. Um, so that's and... like sort of the first important thing. Um, and the next thing is there's a few different cancellation rules about when you can use one skill versus the other. So like, for example, um, okay, let's just have a shift attack here. So I'm going to go... Um, like uh, do melee and then cancel into double strike. So you can see like I, you didn't, the, the melee effectively didn't happen. Um, whereas if I um, uh, cancel right at the end, then um, uh, I, I can't do it until like a little bit of time has passed. So once again, it's a little bit hard to see, um, but yeah, it just makes the combat feel a lot more fluid. And like, you, you don't get this thing where you sort of feel like um, I'm sort of stuck um, in combat. Like, you, you know, especially because the other thing that we've done um, is we'll made it so that all movement skills are now instant. Um, so that's obviously another big one. Um, what I'm going to do is um, we've actually also added a bunch of low-level skills because we wanted to. Um, so I'm just going to go uh, skill gem. Um, so this skill here is called uh, dash, which is like the lowest level movement skill. You get it at level four. Uh, and this skill, as soon as I press the button, um, I'm just instantly dashing uh, um, across the place. And once again, you can I can be in the middle of an attack. Like even if I'm in the middle of like doing a double strike or whatever, I can just quickly you know like move out of the way at any time. Um, so that com uh, movement skill is now completely override, um, like anything, even the, uh, except for stun, unless you have been stunned. Um, why am I on fire right now? That looks a bit weird. There's like a, you know, the, <laughs> <laughs> the cat you got you. The bug here, but, uh, anyway, um, uh, the, uh, so basically if you're, um, uh, if, if any state except for stun, you can always cancel into a move. Um, and so this low level movement skill here, basically it's not designed as a sort of traveling skill. So it's got like a, a small cooldown on it, um, but you can use that to, um, yeah, to get, to get out of combat. And, um, sort of, we've got the sort of focus actually on, um, several of our, um, low level, uh, at level four now, every class gets some kind of defensive, um, uh, ability like that. Um, so in the case of, um, because now of course you can respond, um, more easily to, um, uh, incoming damage now that you've got basically both uh, the animation cancelling and the instant speed move um responding to damage is now more of a thing so we've actually tried to really embrace that so um that's kind of like uh, yeah, yeah first thing um so yeah, any, any 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 questions about any of that before i move on to sort of the next next topic here so this is obviously motivated by a desire to make melee feel better to play um yeah, and make make the game overall feel better to play but this opens up a lot of space for like even more Twitch response time in a boss fight or something, exactly, right? Exactly. And like we that, really, that, we really okay. that. Yeah. That's um, exciting. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's actually a few other features that I'd like to talk about, um, sort of related to that as well. So, um, uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, that's, the, that, that's kind of like step number one. Um, there's actually something kind of interesting, the interaction with, um, things like leap slam, actually. Um, I'm just going to generate a leap slam here. Um, and, uh, I'll need to be level 10. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, so basically, so this is what Leap Slam looks like now that it's instant. Oh, sorry, that was not Leap Slam. <laughs> That's what Leap Slam looks like now that it's instant. But what we didn't want to do was have it so that Leap Slam um, didn't have the uh, the like we want it to be instant when you're using it to get away, but we didn't want Leap Slam to be instant when you're just doing it again. So what we actually did is we made it so that um, if you Leap Slam repeatedly, you get you still get the old animations that you did before, and the time is exactly like what it is. But if you leap slam, um, not having leap slam for a, a little while, sorry, I'm running out of mana. Uh, if you leap slam without having leap slam for a little while, then it is instant like that. Um, so basically, um, the time that you would have spent doing the jump at the start of the animation is appended as a kind of like sort of almost like a cooldown thing at the end of the animation in the form of doing the jump for the next animation. If you sort of get what I'm saying. Is um, that so what it leads to is this thing where shield charge and warding blades. Yep, it's true. All in, all movement skills now now instant. Um, That's really cool. I really like that. Yeah. So it's like a it's like a it's, it's kind of an interesting mechanic how how that how that sort of ended up working out. Um, yeah. So that's that's that that, that that's that. Um, so um, yeah, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is like targeting. Um, so this is something that's, uh, when I really looked at it, it was actually quite different than what I expected. Um, so in particular, one thing obviously is name lock is like a, is like a huge, th is like a huge thing, um, where, you know, when you hold down the mouse on a monster, um, you name lock on it, no matter where you move the mouse, um, elsewhere. But one thing we didn't have before was the capability of rename locking onto another monster when another one dies. Um, so now there's this thing with this short cooldown um, after you finish name locking, where you'll continue to where you, where it will actually move the name lock to another character. So if I'm just holding down the mouse here, I'm not I'm not letting go at all. 
and I'm successfully attacking this entire pack of monsters without um, having to let go of the mouse, uh, which is actually something that um, awesome. we didn't have before. And um, the reason why that's kind of important is because um, uh, if you're doing, trying to do single target, one of the big issues with it, which is one of the reasons why everyone feels the need to absolutely use multi-strike, um, is that you can't easily target like all the enemies in a pack when you've got really fast attack speed. Um, whereas now, once you've got really fast attack speed, your character will just move on from one enemy to the other while just holding the mouse button down. Um, uh, including doing cancels and moves where needed and that sort of stuff and like actually making sure that you actually hit all of the monsters um, in a pack. So it actually makes single target a lot more viable um, in, in the situations where you've got a lot, a lot of monsters in a pack. Um, so the actual mechanics of all of this are like a, a, a quite, quite tricky. There's like a lot of things going on with it. So it's like a little bit, as I said, it's a little bit hard to explain without really trying it. Um, but uh, it is, you know, like it, it does just make the game feel a lot better. And it's something that I, like I was, I was sort of like sort of asking the question of like, why is it? that every single character like absolutely has to have Modi Strike. And I feel like if the answer is because they want bigger attack speed, I mean, that's obviously fair enough. That's what Modi Strike is for. But if the answer is um, that it's because um, uh, it makes the targeting feel good, then the thing that we need to do is make the targeting feel better without it, right? Um, and so that's like the, the an, an, another area. Um, so um, yeah, that's uh, now. There's quite a, there's quite a lot of things going on in this area. Like if you actually dig into it, like for example, we've now I've added a thing where if you um, would click uh, slightly off a monster um, and then move on to it, like almost immediately, then it will actually name lock to it anyway. So it's like these are kind of little affordances to make it so that you feel like even when you miss, you still manage to actually hit like the thing you were intending to do. Um, there's also yeah. now a thing where um, if you are uh, right clicking on the ground, um, so you're not name locking. But then you move over a monster, it now actually targets the monster, but doesn't name lock. Um, so you can kind of like, you know, you're, I'm going off, I'm, I'm doing attacks like this. Um, and then when I move on to the monster, I can still actually target it, which is not something that worked before. But um, you can still, for example, target near monsters to purposely miss for like AoE yep, capabilities. You can, okay. Yep, you, you can do that. So the, 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 that, that thing there is mostly so that you don't... Um, so the, okay, so there's actually there's actually quite a few things going on because there's, there's also the targeting differently with different skills I should mention. Um, so for example, um, the skills where someone would want to um, only target the ground um, for that reason, then you can still do that. Like we, we just have different flags on those skills so that they um, they, they end up being differently. So this behavior is all sort of controllable per skill. Um, so um, yeah, that's kind of like a, a few things that are going on there as well. And then once again, the, the idea here is to actually make it so that targeting is something that um, is no longer a, like you know a, a problem. Like it doesn't feel like a chore in PoE to target monsters. Like the, you, the, the, so long as you're pointing at the thing you want to hit, you should actually be able to hit that thing, uh, even when there's large groups and you're hitting monsters one at a time and all that sort of stuff. Um, so this is all functional with hold still as well, right? Uh, like uh, you can still attack, yeah. Yeah, remove yeah. So name lock. Yeah. Works. Okay. Yeah, everything everything works correctly there. Um, yeah, so comfortable for people yeah, yeah. who are super familiar with melee. I think. Yeah. So one thing. So so one thing with shift attack is that of course you, your character doesn't move. Um. So that means that like if you actually if you if you were actually doing it for a um attack like an actual like I mean mostly at end by the time you get to end game everyone's got like quite large amounts of attack range and so on um for, for like for whatever reason um so but if you were a relatively short range character you'd probably not want to use shift because the character being able to move to get to the next monster is kind of important and the nice thing is is that it will do it in the slack time between uh the the between the end of the damage phase during the cancel before the next phase. So it's actually possible now for the character to do a, effectively a free move during that cancellation period to order to close to the next monster um, before attacking it without actually having any sacrifice in, in, in like number of actions per second. Um, if you sort of get what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the yeah, yeah, the yeah, racers okay. so, what you're saying, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's like, I mean, that's a little bit of extra efficiency. That's, yeah, so I mean, so yeah, it's, it's actually good interesting um, because the, the uh, so, Okay, so that's, 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 that's kind of interesting, but then just, just in case you think that we're being too generous with all this stuff, one thing I will mention is the fact that, okay, so something I find kind of crazy that we never actually really realized before is that, um, so obviously all spells have cast times, right? But melee skills actually all take exactly your melee weapon time, which is actually kind of weird when you think about it. There's like a bunch of different animations, right? You've got heavy strike, you've got ground slams, and you've got like regular attacks and so on. These are all different animations that are anim animated by our animators at different speeds, but are actually rendered at the same speed um, uh, like in the game. Like everything was just using your attack time. Even things like double strike, which were um, uh, like, you know, which is fitting in two attacks in the space of one, um, was rendering in exactly the same amount of time as your regular melee attack. So one thing we um, tried to do now is we've actually added on skills the ability to have... Um, a attack time multiplier 
Um, so attack time multiplier is, um, it's currently says DNT on the line, it stands for do not translate because they're not finished with it yet. But um, the, uh, the, the idea here is now we can actually adjust individual um, skills um, to be um, uh, doing um, like, a, like, a, like a different speed, which is just something we didn't do before. Um, so in a lot of cases for some attacks, we've actually realized that um, we can make certain attacks feel more powerful by slowing them down and increasing damage. Um, which is what we've done for generally for the slams and also for the sort of heavy strike style animation things and we've increased damage to compensate now an interesting point about this is because of the way that animation cancelling works now um so this this 15 percent slow down on heavy strike ends up being effectively nothing by the time you've got the animation because you can cancel about the last 15 20 percent of the animation anyway so if you're actually attacking um if you're killing an entire pack in one hit um it ends up being approximately the same amount of um total attack time um in the end for uh, for for a, for a skill like this um but it just looks a lot better like um if i uh use ground slam here like um if you compare the speed of my regular attack compared to the speed of my ground slam like now the character looks like they're moving at roughly the same speed even though the ground slam is actually very slightly slower in terms of like total amount of time to do that action um because the uh, animation of like you know moving to do that ground slam is um uh, is, 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 like a, is like a larger motion for the character, now sort of looks more correct. So it just sort of feels more correct as well. And the same is true of Heavy Strike, where, you know, you get a bit a little, little bit more of that kind of like, um, uh, like wind up and, and attack stuff. Um, so yeah, that's uh, what we've done with attack speed. So there are quite a lot of cases where, um, yeah, we've adjusted the stuff throughout the game. Um, and uh, we're also sort of like, uh, obviously increasing the damage a lot to compensate for that stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, and, and then also sort of relating to that, um, you might've noticed when I was hovering over the heavy strike there, you'll see that it says adds one to three physical. Um, so typically on, um, uh, melee gems, there hasn't been any kind of flat damage, um, on, on, on the gems. Um, and the reason for that was because that was kind of like, um, I mean, so basically it's the, 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 the weapons, sorry, the, 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 the melee skills were entirely based on your weapon damage. Um, so there were actually there was actually one skill that didn't quite exactly work like that, which was double strike. And um, sorry, where is it on my character here? Um, double strike. So um, double strike actually does have flat damage versus bleeding enemies, and it actually is one of the skills that's probably of all of the melee um, single target skills. It's probably the only one that actually really sees use. And um, we should think a reasonably large percentage of the reason for that is due to the fact that it actually doesn't rely on your weapon damage quite as much because it actually has something that scales up with um, with gem uh, level. So by having something, we we're actually planning on having it so that all melee skills have a little bit of um, uh, stuff that levels up with, with gem level in order to make it so that, um, like, we're, we're shifting the balance slightly between, like, the requirement of how good your weapon is by having a little bit of base damage on, the, um, on, on, each, of the me on each of the melee skills. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that sort of helps a little bit are, with that. Are weapons addressed alongside that to balance that out, or...? So, no, we're not, we're not nerfing weapons. We're only just increasing... Oh, I mean... Oh, we, we, we're, what we're adjusting is the, um, so you've got the, uh, what do you call it, um, deals 90% of base damage here. So effectively we can, we can adjust that number in order to adjust like the percentage that's sort of to make it work out. So effectively, like mm -hmm. we're, we're sort of detuning de a little bit the requirement of how good your weapon is, just a little bit, and then increasing the amount of damage that you just get inherently in the skill um, w along with level. Um, so that kind of means that you get a little bit, uh, a little bit better there. And it, it, it changes the requirement a little bit so that you don't have to have quite like, you know, because I mean, obviously, making a really good top tier weapon is like a huge, is like a, a, a extremely expensive proposition, right? Um, so it effectively mean, means that the media, the like the, the the median level of weapon is going to be just like a little bit better compared to before, um, where and the high end ones a little bit slightly worse than before. Um, but it's just kind of effectively tuning in that zone to make it a little bit better. Um, yeah. Any questions about any of that? Uh, just because there'll be someone confused. So all of these changes, these are all global changes, which directly buff melee but will affect spell casters and everything right um so all the stuff like animation cancel like anything that sounds like a system change is a change right like so spell casters do also get the animation cancelling uh the difference is though that um typically the um in in the uh spell cast animation the contact point which triggers the spell is like later in the animation generally um, so that means that like they get they get a little bit less um effect out of the cancel due to that uh, but then they do of course still get the ability to cancel uh, to do the early cancel for just as long which means that they um uh, are getting a um uh you know they still get the, the feel benefits that you get from that so like um, they could still melee... cancel mid spell echo for example um uh, and you can still and you can still cancel mid spell echo you can and of course they, uh, and, and of course anyone can always cancel into a movement skill 
Yeah. Um, so that means that they get, yeah, they, they always get that. Um, now, something else you might not have noticed here is that um, we actually changed the animations. Um, so I'm actually going to make a new area of this uh, of this area. And um, one thing I'd like to that you might not have noticed is that actually every melee attack now um, can hit multiple enemies. So if you've got multiple guys, um, I can hit I hit all of them with a single with a single strike. Um, so basically, what, whatever it looks like you should hit with your swing um, is what you actually hit. Um, so in the past, we used to just only have, um, you know, we used to only, like effectively every every single target attack was really single target, right? Um, now it's it's not AOE, but basically your weapon range and stuff like that can actually mean that you actually hit um, a series of guys together if they're standing close to each other. Um, was, and that's that scales by weapon range, right? Uh, yeah, so weapon range now, now scales that. Um, uh, well, weapon range scales the distance away from your character. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't change the, the width of the cone. Um, so you kind of get like, uh, yeah, so weapon range is good. The, the other thing we're also doing alongside this, by the way, is that now we've actually committed to every single skill in the game now actually renders AOE distances correctly. Um, and that's kind of what, I mean, there's no longer a thing where you look like you can, um, that you're um, not hitting something, you actually are. Um, so does that mean, what does that mean for like a, 30 weapon range cyclone or something. What does that look um, like? Well, I'll show you what that means. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. So uh, I'm going to put cyclone. Oh, actually, I don't have this. Because you, you can get some pretty nutty range with that. Yep, you can. Um, so we actually changed the effect of cyclone. Um, oh, I need stats as well. Um, so uh, here's what cyclone more now looks like with no, with no weapon range. And then if I go add stat uh, weapon range, I think it is, or weapon melee weapon range plus um this had like 10 to it um so now you can see oh larger. my god yeah yeah so wow. like it actually okay so the other thing of course cyclone now channeled um so i just let go when i want to stop um and the other thing as well is it's got different speeds so if i move the mouse really close i move really slowly if i move onto it i actually stop and then if i move further away i go faster um so that actually feels really or... nice is attack speed or move speed controlling that or it makes it uh better? your move speed uh well actually sorry i should actually i, I uh, whatever it was that controlled the speed you could move before uh, is, okay. is controlling Sorry. the speed now. We haven't changed that. Um, but basically, there's just effectively it'll move at half speed when you go when you have the mouse close, and then zero speed when you move really close. I think there might be like three or four gradations or something like that. But basically, yeah, um, when you move further away, it, it moves faster. We're using the same total, like the, the speed you move it at in total is is still controlled by um, uh, by uh, yeah by by whatever it was before. I, I'm not sure whether it was attack or move yeah. speed before. Sorry. But, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so I don't cool. need to catch Sorry. you out with something. Can you, can you spend, some more, spend some so, more, Jonathan? Spend some more. Come on, man. Don't, okay, well, don't leave the second. Spend some more. Okay, so you want to. We uh, like the spoony boy. You, you need yeah, to remember like that, spin. like, we've been wanting, like, a, a proper cyclone in PAE, like, since it was first. Yeah, yeah. So no, I know, I know. It's great. So we're very happy. And it, it is officially oh. channeled, so Cast Wind Channel does, does work as well, which is something a lot of people asked us um, at the time. But yeah, no, it's looking, it's looking good. Um, so you'll notice here, does, by the way, the, uh, the difference between... Real quick, how does the, the melee swings interact with something like uh, Ancestral Call, for instance? Because that's where most people got their damage before. And I kind of noticed the melee swings, but I wasn't sure if it's lag, so I don't want to yeah, call you so, out. Does Ancestral so the, Call still target um, like the closest mob? So, okay. So, um, basically, uh, with Ancestral Call, Ancestral Call will still target the same way it did before. Like, it will still pick a, a monster based on the way that it, it, it did uh, before, but like, but the ancestral calls, the individual swings of the ancestral call shadows, or what are you going to call them, can hit multiple guys as well. Um, so, like, it can lead to like situations where. Okay, so one other question we we wanted to ask, and is that, and we actually haven't fully made a call on, is basically for each skill we have to make a call on. Um, so, for example, let's talk about like molten strike, right? So the question would be, if you hit multiple guys with your swing with molten strike, do you get multiple ball explosions? Uh, the answer to that is currently no, but I kind of wanted to make it yes for as many skills as possible because I think it makes it interesting. Now, Molten Strike like has the issue where it's like there's so many projectiles, we think it might just get a bit too insane if we allow it for that one. Uh, but for each skill, there will be the call of like, um, do things do things proc on all enemies you hit, or does or do things proc on um, on, on, on on like you know just just to the primary location where you're swinging. Mm, um, and yeah, right. the, the answer to that is going to be different for different skills. 
you might be safest keeping it at a no with molten strike. Or else you're gonna have like molten strike, I think possibly Pathfinder like, molten strike spawning a million worms yeah, on a boss I, I, I and swinging really once. The designers of like I really want molten strike to work on multiple guys, and they were just like they weren't having any of it. Um, so. I, I do kind of like the, like guys. We have this problem that everyone's using molten strike, so at the same time, I want to buff molten strike with more spikes. <laughs> I mean, we'll put it this way: if, if we did make it so it did that, we would also have to lower the um, the damage of the balls, I assume, which is probably why we won't end up doing that. But you know, that's the thing. Um, so, um, all right, so I'm going to go down my list here and have a look at a few other things. Um, oh, yeah, there's like, so there are other, um, uh, I mentioned, like, just, oh, yeah, another one. Um, so, um, skill gem quick. Uh, yeah, this is a different name. So, here we have a skill called um, uh, Steel Skin. And this is part of actually, mm -hmm. this is now the low level version of, um, of uh, Molten Shell. Shell? Yes. So um, basically now we've got a thing where you can respond to damage by just going like that, and then you immediately uh, have, I believe it's 70% um, reduction um, to uh, damage, but capped at a certain value uh, of, of total mitigation for a given hit, which is uh, which goes up as the, as the um, skill gem scales up. So this is once again part of our sort of low level, like you can respond to damage incoming things. So if you see, you know, like if you see something coming towards you, just, you know, hit that. Um, and then you can mitigate damage for a little bit of time. Um, so yeah, once again, that's, that's, that's going for that. It's going for that look. Now, molten shell actually now works uh, differently as well because what we wanted to do with molten shell was make it so that it was a really viable uh, thing to be using in response for um, for bosses. Because one problem that armor has is that it works really well against lots of small guys, um, but armor does not work very well against bosses. So what we wanted to do with molten shell was make it so that it would it could convert. Um, armor into something that um, worked well against bosses. So the way Molten Shell works now is that it does 75% uh, damage reduction um, while the Molten Shell is active, up to a cap which is determined by the amount of armor you have. Um, so the more armor you have, the higher the cap. Um, and this means that you can actually use it pretty successfully um, to um, to have a an, uh, an instant speed um, uh, button that you can click in order to deal with uh, a large amount of damage and come across as well. Could you quickly um, just show it to us? Um, yes. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look any different, you know what I mean? It, yeah, just, yeah. it looks like the molten shell that you've seen. I'm not sure if we've updated the... Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. We haven't updated the, the hover, so it doesn't actually look um, different. But, I mean, you know, like, um, maybe I can... Um, maybe I'll go to 113. Have a, have a look at... Mm, yeah. So... Um, Good old 113. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> We've got a bunch of rowers here, and if I use Molten Shell, um, it actually works, as I said, like quite different. Like, the, the other thing as well is that the damage it does now is based on the amount of uh, life that you um, uh, that, so that, that, that was reflected by the by the Molten Shell. Um, so basically, the more armor you have, the more damage it's also going to do. Um, so like the harder you get kind of, hit, the wow. bigger the shield. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. that's kind of like an interesting change. Um, that's that's really crazy. Neat. Yeah, yeah. One, so that's get a double one ring. Also, it's sort of also part of the thing. We just wanted to really increase the number of defensive options for melee. So yeah, you've got those two there. Um, and then we've also uh, buffed Fortify um, quite significantly. Um, now, there are some mechanical changes to it, which I don't quite remember. So I'm going to have to maybe look at and consult my list here. Whoa, whoa, um, whoa, Jonathan. Yeah, that's a big <laughs> yeah, yeah. drop, casually. <laughs> is there, yeah, is is there Fortify, like, uh... like that's, that's used everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no. So fortify, fortify is really important. Um, I know that they have buffed it. I just don't quite remember the exact change now. I talked with Rory about it earlier. Um, one thing they also have is there are actually things in the passive tree now for buffing fortify. Um, so you can you can actually invest in it now as well if you want. Um, so that's a that, that's another useful one. I'm just going to go down my list and see if I can find any uh, some some other things to talk about here. Oh yeah, animation queuing. Okay, this is an interesting one. Um, so uh, in the past, if you were like so, there there are two different types of players, right? There's the hold down players, and then there's click click. Click, click, click players, right? Um, so in the past, we didn't um, want, we didn't actually have animation queuing because we found that um, if you did, then because it was, uh, if, if we were to have queuing, then it would commit you to an attack that you then couldn't cancel. Uh, but now that we have animation canceling, queuing is fine. And that actually means that if you're a click, 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 click player, you actually don't suffer any kind of uh, damage reduction versus people who um, hold the button down because like it's now frame perfect. Like as soon as you finish your last animation, you'll do, um, you'll queue the next one. Um, and it actually does improve the feel because it means you can queue things like when you're in the middle of a stun. Like for example, if you press um, the leap slam button while you're in a stun, not only is it instant in the case where, 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 um, you, know, where you weren't stunned, 
Um, but it, you can, it'll actually cue the leap slam for after the stun finishes. And so that means that you don't get that quite so sticky feeling going on um, when monsters are hitting you. Like you don't have to hit that exact time anymore. Like I'll hold the button down or do anything like that. You just press the button and it will the cue will go in there. And there's a few things around cue mechanics about what replaces what and so on that like mean that you tend to get things that, that this tends to get things right. Um, but yeah, that's like another 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 little detail there to improve the um, feel of melee combat. Uh, quick question while you try and remember the fortify yeah. thing. So we've got two new defensive abilities. Well, new, one rebuffed, one new one. And then we yeah. have dash. Do we have any other like new instant movement skills? Um, there is another instant movement skill that's designed for spellcasters um, at low level because we wanted to give them all a low level. But I'm actually not going to show you that right now since we're mostly talking about melee here. Um, so there's a, yeah, there is another... Um, uh, there, there is another movement. Skill. My my one question is: Is there anything to prevent people from like using all of these together? Like oh yeah yeah. Level? So they all share. They all they, they all have shared like. Uh, okay, in some cases cooldowns, in other cases like things like um you know the thing I was showing you with leap slam earlier where it had that thing where it does the jump if you just jumped. Um, so there's things like that that prevent it being instant in the cat like like basically that they share that mechanic if you know what I mean. Um, if I um use like shield charge or something um. So you couldn't just like, for example, rotate between three different movement skills. To... No, no, no. Okay. They're they're all they're, they're they're all like that mechanic is is fixed to make that work okay. correctly. Okay. Um. So uh, yeah, like here's instant instant shield charge. It doesn't have the charge anymore. But if I um if I shield charge repeatedly, um, you get that sort of extra like weight that you have to do. Um, it's a bit hard to see here, but like the but yeah, like there's that extra weight, and the same is true if I if I leap slam into shield charge, you'll see that I couldn't like if I like if I, if, I, if I normally leap slam, you see how I, like, as soon as I land, I can start walking because it cancels mm -hmm. the it cancels the animation at the end. Whereas if I um, uh, if if I uh, leap slam into shield charge, then it takes a bit longer to get moving. If you see what I'm saying, yeah. Um, so yeah, those those rules kind of like apply across to make sure that all the different um, uh, movement skills work correctly together. I mean, the thing which is crazy is, so for me, there's a bit of choppiness happening, but that still looks smoother than current, like, high attack speed leap slam. So that's, like, insane. Right, right. Yeah, it's like things that, tr tr the stuff is a lot better, right? Like, it, 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 we really did, <laughs> we really did improve me. Like, it, it is significantly better. Um, I mean, there's lots of subtle details that I sort of realized when I really started looking into it. Like, um, I was talking about targeting before. Like, another random example is, like, okay, so you're holding down left click to move, and then you press a button to do like um, a leap slam or something. Um, you don't want to. Um, so then maybe leap slam is the best example because it actually engages you. But like, okay, let's say I'm holding click to move, and then I left click to do like a. a, a, a um, okay, ground slam is actually a good example, but I don't have it in right now. Uh, also, slam. quickly, sorry, do you mind going back to the previous era? I think that ice neighbor shrine is what was causing the lag that I was seeing. Okay. Yeah, I think so too. Like it's working fine, and then you move. You just move slightly <laughs> close to it, and then it was like a bit choppy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, this is just the stream. Yeah, much the actual yeah. game is running flawlessly for me. It's just yeah. Um. So oh, uh, that didn't mean to do that. <laughs> um. So um. Right. So if I'm holding on to move, and then I press Q. Um. I get like a ground. Like it. It, it actually does an automatic shift attack of the skill that I clicked because I'm still holding move. So you can kind of like do things on the run. Um. Will this uh, solve like another... that weird problem we used to get where our characters would get stuck on like lock boxes and chests? Um name locks to them. Yeah. Cause we could in theory automatically cancel do you kind of know what I mean? Like you'd go to open a chest, you'd click away, but your character would be like dragged back towards it. Mm-hmm. If you're holding down the button, yeah. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah, I think I know. It. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm actually going to check on that specifically because I don't know the exact like like what exactly was causing that. But I, I like if, once again, that's good to rem it's good to tell me about stuff like that because it means that I can actually look and make sure that's fixed. But yeah, we, we're we're trying to fix like all of these different cases. So you know, um, yeah. And we're kind of getting a bunch of Christmas presents here. This is yeah. wonderful. But I am curious if there's been any changes to collision with move sk move skills in particular. If you guys have looked at that at all. Because that's um, probably one of the larger complaints I have in, in particular with something like shield charge. Okay, where you'll so you're be like trying to, to charge like... perpendicular and you'll just yeah. hit the wall that you're next to over and over. Um, so for that one, that just requires making sure that the um, uh, that the shield charge is going where you really intend to go. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's not really so much a collision thing as, as it is uh, making sure the Pathfinder picks the right decisions. Um, we have actually made updates to the Pathfinder, which I was... Um, 
we'll mention it a little bit as well. Um, actually, no, let's just go into it now. Okay, so here's an interesting thing. So what we actually found, is, and this sort of shows you how low level we're kind of going here. So one of the things we found was that um, when we actually, no, sorry, I haven't really, one thing I, had, I never really went into very much was the, um, uh, the, the hitting multiple guys thing. Um, because that's actually, there's an important point I wanted to make about this, which is uh, if I look on our tool here, um, so now we actually, like every, every attack has got like a damage range like this. And um, one thing we really uh, did was we made sure to get the timing on everything correct. So as you're swinging through guys, um, you can see that the... It's um, not instant, it actually travels yeah, through. It's not like an instant point. There's actually like a, 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 a sort of period where like it actually goes through the guys. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so this was like a system that we were changing over to. And the thing is that actually, we're also going to do the same thing on monsters. Like if I open Hillock here, um, let me just find Hillock. Oh, man. He is a monster. Did uh, this require like, uh, like how much effort did this take to lot, do this to like yeah. every attack? <laughs> a lot of effort. Actually, match it to the three D space yeah. it's moving through. Um. So. Kind of uh, okay. So there's like Hillock. Um. Th that cone is rendering a little bit weird there, but you can see basically the attack that he does. Mm -hmm. Um. And then, for example, um, here's like attack two unarmed, where he's like swinging, like he's taking like a sort of round. What do you call that? Uh, Haymaker, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't so, know boxing. <laughs> so you can see, like, it kind of like does the does the swing, right? So anyway, um, when we moved to this, what we found was is that our old distance metrics we were doing were just not sufficient. So we actually used um, uh, for melee attacks, we used like a thing called Manhattan distance, um, and between two squares. If I render the like boxes, the the collisions here of everything, um, you can see that every entity in the game is actually a square. Like the player there is that little is that little square, and um, the um, uh, when we actually started to do things where we wanted to have lots of cone shapes and all that sort of stuff, we realized that we actually needed to uh, the distance metric of PoE, as it's called. Um, so we now use the Euclidean distance. If programmers should know what I'm talking about, um, where uh, and, th and that's kind of cleaned up a lot of the feel of uh, like. So when we did that, we also had to adjust the Pathfinder to use that type of distance, and then we had to like you know then then when we did that, we realized that like uh, that we had to change from using four way pathfinding to eight way pathfinding. So that is to say, in the past, the actual character would only like the Pathfinder would only look like um, north, south, east, west. And then, like basically, like if you had to move it a diagonal, it would be like dit, 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 like going like that. Now, now the now the character actually moves along diagonals, like on the, on the coordinate grid, and so that lets you slip between a lot of places you weren't able to slip between. So, what you what you, the reason why I mentioned all of this and why this all came out was because you were talking about um, um, shield charge, uh, clip, clip, clipping on borders. I would say now that we've actually made it so that the pathfinder and the um, uh, the collision detection and the like, and then and, and, like the target, uh, the, the what well, I should say, the, the like the, the uh, target uh, finding code and all that sort of all now agree on the same kind of way of doing distances and the same way of understanding targets. So you shouldn't ever get that thing anymore where the Pathfinder thought from here you could go somewhere, but the game, when it, you actually cast something, it wasn't actually able to get there. Like those kinds of bugs, you know what I'm talking about? Like you fire a projectile yeah. and it like didn't hit the guy because it hit mm -hmm. some clipped on some wall, these kind of things, right? So that was all quite a long and roundabout explanation, but basically we've improved all that stuff quite significantly. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying, what I'm trying right. to get at here. Yeah. Um, like it wasn't, it wasn't a targeted thing, like let's go and fix shield charge mobility. It's more just a knock-on benefit of going down. Right, right, right. Ex exactly. You know, um, but it also does mean you can kind of weave through monsters a little bit better because of that diagonal move that like there's more space for you to move around so that do, it does actually help uh and, and makes things can sort of pack around a little bit nicer and just you know generally improves things so, so does that also yeah, make like, like dodging enemies feel more consistent as yeah. well um well absolutely so this is a huge area that we did so um actually you know I'm, I'm actually ashamed to admit that i one thing i didn't realize that the game had okay so it turns out that the collision cone uh the the, the old uh thing uh for monsters where um for dodging attacks um was entirely based on distance and didn't care where the monster was facing and now that we've actually added the actual collision cones it means that you can actually dodge sideways around a monster to dodge their attack and like if i actually show you um and like this this was another thing that i really did i said okay if we can't if we need to be able to make hillock feel like a reasonable fight if we can't make hillock feel good then we're not doing it so anyway now you can actually dodge hillock like really easily you can i'm um, oh, sorry i'm just punching these zombies while i'm at it um, uh, I, I might be a little bit high level and like take help out and just single hit, but I'll just uh, if I don't here. Um, so uh, okay, 
So Hillock hits me. Let's just verify that's all working. Yep, Hillock's going to me. And now you can actually dodge kind of sideways. And then depending on where, what his attack, like how his attack animation is, it will sort of change where you can dodge. So if I um, damage him down so that he pulls his sword out, um, and uh, his sword attack tends to either come from above um, or it comes from the side. And so that means that when you're dodging, you actually dodge right rather than dodging left. Because if you dodge left, you get hit. Whereas if you dodge right, you actually don't. And that's kind of interesting because it's actually so oh my God. like so like you can actually I see mean... like in the in the in 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 the in the in the asset viewer if I see the attack one this is a from above attack so it goes like that whereas attack two sword is like that coming around so it's actually like there we actually have this all on now with proper damage stuff you can actually see where the monster's going to hit and when you dodge out of the way of it it actually works correctly so, so yeah that's like a what I'm yeah. getting from this is that you guys really want to make a lot more boss fights. <laughs> we, we really, really, really want. Fights, but yeah, like the, 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 this, this stuff has just been like a, a, a you know, and you know the funny thing, the funny thing about it as well, when we actually, so okay, so one one, one thing we realized when we added all this dodging stuff and like making that, what, what we realized is we actually had to, um, like especially early game, we actually had to buff monsters because okay. like, it was actually a problem. It's like okay, now it's so easy to dodge like and so on, and so then we're like okay, well let's actually think about what we actually want to do. So the next thing we um, realized that we wanted to do was actually make it so that monsters have way more signaling um with their attacks and then when they hit they hit harder so we buff damage um and then also increase their attack time and then in order to do that we actually started to add a system where we can now um uh have uh so we've now got a system where as the um it's all right so imagine you want to slow down like a monster's attack the problem that you get is that um the like you get like the sword just like sliding through the air really slowly it looks really bad we actually want is like when the monster like um does to do the attack you want it to like go up and then have the sort of hold position up here where it's like only moving really slightly and then still do the slash um as fast as possible um so you actually did that with hillock um if i do that again you might be able to notice it um it, it is quite subtle but like it actually makes a huge difference when you compare it to the um, uh to the to the non-version so um he actually like what the hell what's he doing oh there we go <laughs> i think his ai just took a second to engage um so his like pullback for the punch is like way slower but the part is the same as the, the same duration as before um let me just uh do some damage to him to get us to pull the sword out it's easier to see with that um okay what's going on here why is why has he got why am i not doing any damage to this guy you spawned uber hillock it's one percent chance oh no oh you're, you're too high level i actually did <laughs> yeah, you can see the sword in him oh, I see oh my god i was like what the hell's going on here yeah. i'm sorry Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. you no, you're actually right to it's got a, the fight you have yeah, to commit to the fight it's actually got the sword in there i'm just gonna do that again no 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 the, there are people farming what? like 12 yeah, hours was... to get there. <laughs> Kill this thing! Come on, uh, get it! No, okay, I actually can't. Oh, come on, it's gonna take me forever. I'm just gonna use it. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay. Right. So um, anyway, so his 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 actual attack speed has been slowed down a lot, but he's got what called slow zones in his attack animation, where basically um, the uh, to like notice his attack animation, he kind of has this wind up that takes longer, um, and then uh, and then the actual slash is preserved in speed. Um, this I, I've never actually done with the Uber Hillock, and I worry that the animation set is different, and I'm concerned that this is like ruining my demo. Right? I'm gonna yeah. <laughs> just gonna use the chip to get rid of them. But uh, any, any, anyway, Whoa. so so basically, so basically, the idea here though, uh, yeah, like we, we can kind of get this uh, anticipation and build up in in the different attacks, and actually have that, and then and, and so you can actually dodge them, or you can use things like the um, you know the steel skin and stuff like that, and it'll actually Whoa. respond to those events happening. Um, and so that's something we really wanted to do. And so we actually started, we actually revisited a huge number of the um, monsters. So um, if you look at what Fire Fury does now, um, so for example, if you look at the changes we did here, so when mm. she uses her um, her Firestorm, it's a much tighter area, um, but much more Firestorm. So like it does more damage, but you can move out of the way. And like, that's an example of the kind of stuff we want to do, right? So basically we're increasing damage, but making dodge ability is kind of, is, is kind of the theory. Um, she also yes. now, of course, does... Um, uh, flame dash, and um, she's also got an, a, a staff attack to attack you with, and so on. Um, but even you'll notice that like, her attack there, um, when she attacks you, there's so much more of a wind up than there would have been on a normal POE attack before. You can really dodge those melee attacks. Um, so yeah. That's Could the... you show us hail rake? I feel like that'd be a good uh, example. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just ooh. curious. Is, is there any like worry that um, this might be a pretty significant buff to slowdown effects though? So like things like temp chains, chill, aspect of the spider. Because if attacks are a little slower on the wind up and more readable already, if you're slowing them down even further, then they 
kind of become a joke to just avoid, right? We will. I, I am sure that our balance team is thinking about this. Like, this is actually. I mean, there's, so there's a there's a huge um, amount into the sort of monster rebalance mm -hmm. stuff. Now, I should mention that it's not every monster that's getting this treatment. We're actually doing. Um, we're actually concentrating on early game for this more, um, where the attack speeds are sort of slower and like there's more of a dodge. But we're actually, we do plan on doing it like more and more of the game over time. So um, right now, I think it's like um, all the monsters in. Um, uh acts one to three we're currently doing um but uh in uh like and plus plus the versions of those that like you know rows are changed all through the game you know what i mean um but like we yeah. will actually get to, to all of them over time um the oldest ones are the ones that had the worst problems um so uh, that's kind of why we're focusing there like um the oldest monsters were definitely definitely had problems yeah no, um, that makes sense yeah yeah so does it like Hellric now casts Frostbomb and has a prettier looking GC. Yeah, 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 cool. yeah. So, I mean, we, we, as we were just going through, we just like improved things like this. So basically all the sort of uh, like all, all the different uniques. Oh, and that's the other thing as well. We did like kind of life a lot too um, of this thing. And then the, the the other one as well that we did was um, uh, just due to a, a lot of these buffs, we've also um, increased. I, I, so I have this kind of thing where it's like, I feel like the game has been getting too easy, um, especially early game. Um, there's this thing where um, a lot of things have been nerfed over time or else, or else the game, like the, 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 the skills and so on have gotten more powerful over time. It means that early content has really just not been challenging anymore. And a quintessential example of this kind of thing happening to me is the, um, uh, the, the, the goat man in the climb. So the goat men and the climb have the have this uh, explosion effect uh, when when you hit them with um, with with melee. They've got, they've got molten shell, in fact, right? So they've got molten shell on them. Mm -hmm. And the problem was is that people were like, oh, um, I go to hit these molten, uh, you know, these goat men, and um, they cast molten shell like right before I like right at the last moment when I'm hitting them, and then I end up and exploding and kills me. So therefore, the balance, the designers were like, okay, well, we kind of have to lower the damage on this so that it doesn't really do much damage anymore in case that happened. But really, that was not really the correct solution there. The right solution would have been to make it so that if you're in melee range of the goat, then he doesn't cast that skill. And that means that this damage can still be higher, like, you know, it can still be actually a thing you have to play around and actually avoid or, like, worry about hurting yourself with that without having the dumb thing where, like, oh, I, like, I had, there was no way to, I could have avoided this, right? So that's the kind of stuff where, like, we, we need to make smarter decisions with regard to just AI in some cases in order to make it so that we can actually buff the monsters um, uh, and make them do more damage and actually feel more dangerous. Um, and so that's like, you know, one of those things we're really doing, but also just like making sure that like all these monsters that we haven't touched in a really long time, have just got the life they need to actually become challenging again. And lots of, you know, just re readdressing all stuff. And as we were looking through it, we just found so many bugs and problems with like AI, like that some of the monsters weren't even using the skills that they had just due to AI bugs. And it's like, when, when people don't look at things for a while, they just tend to rot and break and like stuff goes wrong. Like one of the things we noticed was like Hillock, his contact point and his animation before, like he, when he was using the old system, it's like single target and he just hits a guy his contact point was in the wrong part of the animation so it's like he takes a swing and like the damage was being applied like before the actual sword like hit you and it's like no wonder people say that melee combat and poe feels clunky truly the first boss of the game is like got damage timing and it's like all it takes is like someone to look at that and like you know and actually focus on that stuff again and it, 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 it really improves that stuff so yeah like I, I think that just getting all those little things right is just the over the feel of the game just so much so significantly i mean it's heartening that you know as the example you gave you saw hillock's attack time isn't correct and the response was let's change how attacks work entirely right, 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 i mean right. obviously more to, more yeah. than just to address hillock but still yeah, yeah. It's, it's heartening yeah um, so, um i'm gonna go back to my list here and see what else oh yeah okay so here's another here's, here's another few so accuracy is now capped at 100 percent you, you cut out, uh, the, the, half you cut out at the end there, Sorry. but I'm assuming you said instead of 95%. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So accuracy uh, no longer has sync cap anymore. So basically the problem here was that, okay, so basically like everyone you everyone is either res tech or crit build. Um, and so we were like, okay, why does everyone to use res tech? And what we got was the reason why is because if you're doing a one hit KO of, an, of a pack, it really sucks when one twentieth of the pack didn't die. So you're going from like I need to I need to do one hit and killing all the monsters to I'm doing one hit and killing none of them. So this is like in the case of a white pack, right? Um, so the idea here was it's like okay, well, what what's the reason for this 95% thing? Like why have we got that? And the answer actually kind of comes back to um, kind of comes back to D and D. Like it's just kind of the whole like critical miss one in twenty thing, totally just like a D and D thing, and it's just kind of like grandfathered in through like over, over time. Um, Does and that mean? Oh, sorry, sorry. Go on. 
yeah, it's just one of those things that kind of grandfathered in through various games and turned into a thing. And we actually really thought about it. We're like, okay, there's actually really no reason for this. What we actually want is for people to be able to be getting 100% hit chance on white monsters so that monsters that are like, um, you know, champions and rares can actually have, um, you know, which have more life and thus take more hits can actually have more evasion and be okay. Like basically we want to make sure not everyone needs to have res tech, right? Like res tech is a damage boost, but it's not a damage boost so much against like white monsters. It's just a damage boost against like, you know, like rare monsters and stuff like that. Um, and also we've, we've just generally, uh, we've fiddled around with the accuracy equations and increased uh, the sources of um, accuracy that you get so that getting to a hundred percent is not like a problem. You know, uh, for, um, mm. for, for 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 regular play, if you if you're you know like you you you, you might need it on a few items, but in general you're going to be able to. Get it. Um, so uh, it also means that we can like um, the monsters that are more evadey, they're only likely to really be evaded, if you know what I mean. Like the but whereas when they're just regular white monsters, they're not going to be so annoying in that way. And in a similar vein, block. So we actually weren't using block on many monsters, and the reason. why was because the same problem, right? Like you just get some, having monsters in a pack that just don't die is super annoying. So like the designers were sort of incentivized to remove it. But the actual solution was we've just made block into a thing where on monsters block. Now, okay, I should say on players it's been left alone, but on monsters, when a when a monster blocks, it um, just takes reduced damage. I can't remember the exact percentage, but it's like, it's a reasonably high percentage, but it, what it means is white monsters are no longer gonna be blocking their way into surviving your, surviving your hit anymore. Um, so that means you can actually put block on more monsters because then it's like a thing. It's just about you know monsters that have shields now all will actually block, and um, it means that um, but they'll still die probably if they're whites, whereas they probably won't if they're um, if they're champions or rares. Um, obviously it depends on how much damage you're doing, right? That some people just like wipe out rares in one hit, but <laughs> you know the theory being that um, you know it, um, it, it improves that that sort of play there, um, and actually makes you know dealing with block something to potentially think about i mean there's a few stats for it now block like, block and and spell block or just block uh i think it's true of spell block as well but don't i don't 100 percent know that i i I would, I would have to check with someone um they probably change spell block at the same time i just don't know because this is this definitely sounds like something melee players could get upset about over you know because we've been hearing a lot of like improvements but we haven't well, really heard a whole lot about buffs. Before, players players don't have that happen to them just monsters Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So for play, players still block 100% of damage um, when, when they block, but monsters do not anymore. Oh, okay. And that's, that's right. just to address that problem of like, yeah, you, you want to kill the pack and the white monster, which is one of them randomly blocks and then, you know, and then, and then doesn't die, which was just annoying. Um, and so now it just allows us to put block on more monsters. Also, um, realistically, that. you'll probably never notice it in maps because you'll do so much damage that even if the white monster had 50% damage reduction, you probably still one shot. Exactly, it. exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, that's exactly my point, right? Whereas on a rare, where like the rare is actually, like you've got a lot of life, then you actually do notice it and it actually does a mechanic thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the sort of the, the, the benefit. Yeah, it should also make leveling feel a lot better because one thing that you don't get it as much now, but I remember this a lot in like the early desync days of PoE, because of how like accuracy and stuff worked, you couldn't tell if you were hitting the mob or lagging. So now the right, fact right. that accuracy is better, <laughs> and even if they do, oh yeah, block, speaking of that, like, actually, oh, go on. Yeah. you reminded me of something as well. The other thing we did is we finally made miss a thing that is told to the game client now. Um, now we're not fully utilizing this as much as we did before. So basically, like before, when you, if you just like do a swing and you hit nothing, that was equivalent to a swing where a monster was there but they dodged you. Or rather, I shouldn't say dodge. I should say they they evaded you because um, you missed. Um, now the game client actually is told about the miss, and that means that we can actually place effects um, or um, or mm. sound and also respond to misses as a mechanic more. So we're not utilizing this too much now. We we do just have like a miss sound effect that you can sort of hear, so you can tell when you're missing. Um, but uh, that is like something that we might be able to explore more in the future as well as like using like like actually dealing with miss in a better way. Um, and so that that's a a useful thing. That's really cool. Um, even potentially yeah. like design space for some interesting yep, things space, that work exactly. around when you miss exactly um all right so that's the we just keep going um oh yeah there's another one uh this is actually a balance change so um we were looking into um you know what does melee need in terms of defensive and something we realized is that um an area that um melee should be better at than spells is uh stunning so stunning is super important um for hit feedback um, but the thing we realized is we could do a lot more to uh, from spells in the stunning area by doing a few adjustments. So the first one is is that um, the base um, the base stun duration of melee is made longer, and the base stun duration of of spells is now shorter. 
So for people, if you're already far back, you don't really care about the exact like number of milliseconds in the stun as much um, for spells. So it really kind of well, really wasn't a huge deal for them already. But for melee, when you're up close and personal, you really do care about the amount of time you're stunning for. So we have increased the base duration of, um, of, of melee a bit. I can't remember the exact amount. Um, something like, I think like spells went down like something along the lines of 20% and um uh, or maybe 25 or something like that and then and then uh melee went up by some amount like that as well the other thing we also did as well is that the um the amount of damage like uh, we've made it so that spells count for less um than melee does in terms of damage so melee gets a bonus um amount something i don't know what the exact final numbers are but something like 25 percent. the damage counts for 25 percent extra in terms of doing stuns and the other thing we've also done on top of that as well is that elemental damage counts for less than um, uh, the physical damage does. So if you're playing melee, you're doing more, you're doing longer stuns and more. If you're playing physical melee, you're doing even more stun because of the fact your damage counts for more. Um, so that's actually differentiating physical a little bit as an element. And by the way, that physical um, that physical bonus I just talked about about how physical counts for more in terms of doing stunning um, also works for um, physical spells as well. Um, so physical now actually does get a little bit more of a difference compared to the elemental spells. Like you know, it's got more of a thing um, for it to do, um, which is to say, to do with stunning. Um, so, and that uh, you you may not actually have the answer to this, but just in case, um, that reduction in term or in terms of the amount of damage you need to do to hit a stun that sounds very much like reduced enemy stun threshold in terms of the stat. Uh, it is, is it actually like that, thing. or is it is I, I, it multiplicative? Then it, it's multiplicative. Yeah, it's a more, it's a, it's, a, it's a more style thing. So it is actually it is like a base thing that is applied on top of well, I should say before everything else, I believe. Um, so because it's actually applied directly to the amount of damage you're dealing, so it's a little bit different than the way the other one works. Um, uh, the exact details, I, I I I did certainly clarify that it is done independently of those other stats, but um, the the exact mechanics around how it's applied, I, I, I think yeah, that was that was all I was curious about. Is, that's really neat. is there a cap? Because <laughs> currently people stun a lot of things in the game, like really big boy things. So um, there, I believe at the this time there isn't a there isn't a cap. Okay, so they said so the thing with stun is I think that in order to actually really stun like bosses and stuff like them, it's pretty heavily in stun. Um, I don't believe I'm, I'm pretty. It is my understanding that you don't invest in it, you don't have a chance of stunning bosses at all at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, if you're not invested, for sure. Yeah, if you're not invested. In it. But um, anyway, we, we we just wanted to improve that element of melee in general. So yeah, we've adjusted the numbers. Um, once again, for exact details, you're going to have to see patch notes slash talk oh, more. Yeah whatever um, but i'm just sort of telling you like from a high level what we sort of want to do so yeah the, the, from a high level the thing what thinking was distinguish melee um from um non-melee and distinguish physical from non-physical in terms of stunning um as terms of their stunning properties um to make that a little bit better um, so, um along those lines are there any other specific changes you made to just melee to get that little extra bit of something something uh, you mean re re with regard to what I was just talking about with stunning, or just in general? Just, just in general, because oh, a lot I mean, of these I'm, changes I'm, are like I've got a giant list here. I haven't, I, I, I haven't finished going through this list yet. So let's just over it. Over it. Let's get to the next bullet point. <laughs> let's just keep mm -hmm. on going here. Um, okay, I talked about low level monsters making the game harder. You must have slow zones. Yeah, attack component stuff. Just change the Oh yeah. Okay. Right. Um, I'm just gonna. I'm just going through the list. I, I'm, I'm kind of getting. I will get back to balance again in a little bit. Um, but, um, okay, so then th then there was just bug fixes in the animation system. And I was kind of surprised how much crap there was here. And the kind, kind of examples of, like, a few of these is, like, okay, so this thing where um, when you are blending, uh, every animation has got a blend in time and a blend out time, which is basically the amount of time we spend blending, um, you know, into the animation, out of the animation, and then we do the, the largest of those, and that's the final blend that you get um, in the animation. So an example of the kind of bug we had was um, we were accidentally um, multiplying the speed of the wrong animation into the blend calculation. So you'd end up with a situation where like you'd be doing a run and then you'd do an attack and then the blend time into the attack was like longer than the attack was. So the first attack after a run would look like really janky depending on what the attack speed was. Like this kind of like little details like that were actually like affecting the game quite a lot. You know, it's like once again, just, you know, it's all just about like finding these little bugs and fixing them. They just contribute to the feel. Um, there was like a few other things around this, like with regard to anime. 
times we had this thing where like events that were during animation like contact points and so on they would happen at the end of the frame always now they can actually happen in the middle of a frame which is actually kind of important because sometimes they change things about how the frame will continue from that point onwards and so that can actually mean that like uh, it actually has a meaningful impact on like you know like how attacks are and it just makes everything feel better so yeah Details of that. Okay. Not not getting completely smashed by whippers, even though you're mm. five yards away from them. I, I hope that that will affect things like that. If that's a, that's a <laughs> yeah, just, just generally improves like the way the events I, work. I imagine mm. that would also help out a lot in situations, you know, like like or like the first three acts, like you were talking about with you know buffing those bosses and designing right. around those. Like, yeah. it sounds like all this stuff is just going to make it feel much smoother to play yeah. PoE in a lower yeah. attack speed, lower so, I mean, attack speed we, environment. That that event timing one in particular, we really noticed that at the point where we started doing the exact damage timing and zones and everything like that because as soon as we did that it became really obvious that that stuff was wrong um and that, that we had to fix it um just right, real so, quick question question yeah. about the damage before we move on uh is there like an approximation of how much things have changed for for the damage values uh, uh I, I understand I, that it's different from case to case basis but yeah i i i, I really don't want to go into that because Okay. Like as I said, I'm I'm here to give you sort of balanced strokes about how we're improving melee in general, but I'm not going to go. Through. I think, like for example, I could tell you that like okay, we would like buffed single target melee like quite significantly. Like there are large, there are large damage boosts to that to to those skills. Like we're actually and also like trying to make it so that each skill that wasn't used um has some kind of place. Um and then the other thing as well oh. when, I, when I when I was talking before about um uh, uh the damage boosts that um flat damage on uh, on melee skills a lot of the time we're we're in, we're adding stuff like that and then just not decreasing um the uh the the the, the damage from your weapon and things like that so yeah like it's, it's getting a, it's 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 relatively was, significant in some cases less than i was in more talking cases. about uh, i was more talking about the mobs <laughs> the, the oh, other he's scared for his about, early hardcore yeah. runs <laughs> um, yeah, yeah yeah uh i actually don't know as a percentage honestly um just mm -hmm. enough to make it feel hard. I just I, I, like so so. The designers are the ones actually buffing the numbers. I'm playing it feels still too easy. Still, this feels too hard. Still, so I actually don't know the like the exact number kind of on that right. kind of stuff. Um, was this like a sort of a design philosophy change? Because Poe, I mean, there were, there were interviews and things in the past where it was more like, oh, Poe is meant to be played with a TV in the background and whatnot. And now it seems like this will require a much more active paying attention um, sort so of approach. I think that it will depend a lot on what you're playing. Like there's certainly still a place for mindless map play, but you need that moment where like, okay, now I'll suddenly I have to care about the monster, um, just sort of happening mm -hmm. from time to time. So it's kind of like, uh, like we, we still want to support that. It's just about making sure that like, okay, when you actually do get to the boss fight, like now that's a meaningful thing you have to care about, like, you know, all the damage zones, and everything, but getting that correct and just making sure that's, that's fine. Um, but I think that the changes in terms of like um, uh, the like the really having to pay attention and like making the game harder that stuff I would say affects the earlier game more than the later game. Like you start to get to the point late game where new, like like the numbers matter more than the actual like moving around and dodging and all that sort of stuff just because attack speeds get so high and like what sort of stuff. So it sort of kind of like tends to fade away a little bit. But at the beginning of the game mm -hmm. it makes it, it makes a much larger difference. Um, and I do want awesome. like the beginning of each league to always feel like a bit more intense than the later than the latest stuff. So you know. Um, I think we want to, um, so what have we got here? Um, I've got a note that says reducing reliance on elements. Um, now I don't actually remember exactly the details around this one, but I think that like, there are a few specific details about like, I mean, I was told like a few, once again, balance is not my area, but I was told a few things. Like for example, they were reducing the um, elemental damage on abyss jewels, but increasing it on weapon base weapons and a few other things like that in order to sort of address like some of the problems that, that we had with, I, th I believe the abyss jewels were like too, um, uh, like they were too yes. required. They to have stacked reasonable... very well with one another. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So there's other things here. Um, we talked about stuns. Um, oh yeah, we've added a bunch of new support gems. Um, I once again, I, I I believe that like spoiler season is going to be revealing a bunch of. There are, there are ones now that are specific to each of the different weapon types, which are quite interesting. I've also got things to reward um, uh, to reward uh, slower and larger hits. Um, some support gems designed around that. Um, and a few other, just a, yeah, just quite a few, quite a, quite a few little things. Uh, just quickly you know, on like, that, um, when you say for different weapon types, are we talking like every single weapon type, or would it be like? Uh, so each weapon type has a support gem dedicated to that. Um, That's that really type. cool. 
Yeah. What? That's I it's thought I thought you would be like cheap and be like, oh, daggers and claws and like axes and <laughs> no, maces. I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure there's one for each. I know That's I'm... really cool. That's really cool. <laughs> um uh what have we got here? Oh yeah, that's right. This is like random mechanical shit. Okay. So like as, as as some ideas, like when we were going through different skills and talking about like how we can make so what what an example of a really challenging one of those was like glacial hammer. Um, because I was like, how can we make it so that glacial hammer matters as a skill? Like what what how do how do we make someone choose to use it? Um so an idea that we came up with for it was actually having it so that glacial hammer is um um okay, so I talked about having how we've got chains now, so we can do like attack. Um, attacks. So, like now, we've got these things where rather than just picking a random animation, it now it now does them in chains. Um, and um, what we're actually going to do for Glacial Hammer is uh, Glacial Hammer is going to actually have a three chain where it goes slash slash and then big slash. Um, and then the third one is actually going to have massive increases to um, the uh, freeze freeze stats that it has. So it'll actually be possible to freeze bosses much more applicably with a Glacial Hammer, but you have to invest in three attacks mm -hmm. in a row in order to do it. So this is kind of a way to make it. It's like a reasonable investment. You actually get a freeze on bosses, and it actually works with party play a little bit. So this is the kind of thing we can do to order make us to make a skill like that actually usable. Um, and so, yeah, just random example. There's also Ignite things glacial hammer build incoming. Oh, <laughs> yeah. can't wait. Oh, curling so, um, a big hit. We're also yeah. looking at like, like, a, a, a few other examples, of like how 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 can um, melee really dominate in terms of like mobility and like making those things. So another thing we did was like okay, so. Slam now has um, always stun on full on monsters on full life. So as an initiator, it works really well. Like you, you leap in and they actually get the sun. And the thing that um, that we're, when I was talking to Mark too about this is like I need to see the twirls. I need to see the spinny twirls. That was like the thing. You know, you know what I'm talking about. How like if you do long second stun, you get a little little icon. Um, oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So exactly, that's the kind of thing I need to make sure is like you know to make it actually feel good right, as an initiator. I thought you were talking about two-handed duelist leap slam for a moment, and the <laughs> yeah, like, that he does with the jumps. The, uh, the, on, 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 the, on the stuns. No, um, I, 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 same is true of um, shield charge. Actually, shield charge now um, does stun uh, based on distance that you shield charged. I, I think it actually already had that, maybe, but um, it, it's been reworked now to make it so that you actually do get the you do feel like the stun when you slam into a bunch of guys. Um, you do get that independently from the weapon damage. Um. Don't I actually let me tell you something about shield charge. Shield charge has actually changed to use shield damage now. Um, so shield oh. damage is calculated in the same way as Special as uh, shield uh, uh, yeah shield throw exactly. Um, oh yeah yeah. Right. So, that's, you know, so that actually means that um, the, that's, that's really based strong because um, like yeah. dense fossils and stuff. Like the only thing holding back shield damage <laughs> from being absurd is that spectral shield throw feels like crap. Right, because um, it's, that it's improved a lot, by the way, um, by slowing down the animation. Um, that that thing I was telling before, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that, that slowing down the throw uh, improved that significantly, and also, um, but and we, but bear in mind, whenever we slow an animation, now we also increase damage. Um, so like the, to make the DPS the same, but then plus in addition to whatever other buffs we're doing, um, there's also mm -hmm. that like general thing. So yeah, that that skill feels a lot better now. I will say. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm glad. I'm just going to have a few random like bits of shrapnel to throw out there that I just have on my note list okay, is right. that um, daggers are getting a uh, caster dagger variant um, that doesn't roll attack mods. Starves are getting a war staff variant that doesn't roll caster mods. Wow. Be useful. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, are we are we talking about one weapon specifically, or like uh, uh, no, a bunch of them? series of them, so you get them. Yeah, wow. I think, I think what we did okay. is we put like I, I believe I'm not 100 percent sure they took like um, some of them and turned them into like some staffs are now war staffs and some daggers are now um, and I think they're called rune daggers. Um, are the ones that only Makes roll sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah, a runic um, rune dagger. That sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I wonder if they thought of that one. I, just, <laughs> I, don't, know. I don't know about that, um, but. Uh, I mean, we've got shapers, shaping, shaping, shaper, shaping sword. Of, no, no, elders, okay. elder sword of the elder. Right, right, right. right. Um, <laughs> True. All right. Um, so uh, that is, for the most part, the bottom of my list here um, of just talking about uh, changes. So, I mean, there are obviously more changes. This is just kind of like an overview of like what sort of stuff you can expect. Obviously, there'll be like patch notes and a whole bunch of balance changes and all sorts of stuff. But I mean, this kind of gives you an idea of the kind of like the, the scope we're talking about in terms of like actually make changing the game to make things feel good. So. Uh, yeah. Damn. Um, any questions? <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Uh, for instance, you mentioned the armor stuff. A lot of people expected an entire overhaul of uh, the armor system. Uh, do we have like an estimation as to how much armor approximately you're going to need to truly benefit from the from the new way Molten Shield works? Is um, it like 10,000 or is I, it more like I can't, I can't give you the numbers on that, unfortunately. I just don't know. Gotcha. Um, but okay. I mean, put it this way. The goal of this was to make armor work in boss fights. So like if we're not achieving um, that, then, we, then we're screwing up. So I'm hoping that, that, will be, that you'll be satisfied by that. Do you happen mm -hmm. to know if there's been any changes specifically to retaliation skills? Um, that was mentioned. Things like repost and all that. Um, I th think the, uh, there is something to do with that, but I sorry, I just don't quite remember. Um, That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm not, what kind of changes were you, were you th are you thinking? Of? <laughs> as long oh, as it's I'm, something, it's probably good. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just felt that they probably were in need of some attention since they're yeah, not yeah. really in a uh, spot they, where they, they, they were build on, around them. So. Uh, they, they were on the list of melee skills to be rebalanced, so I assume that they will get whatever balance attention they need. Um, okay. From that perspective. Um, just a question. So last time we had you on, uh, I think six months ago, whenever it was, we asked about like mm -hmm. action bar space and how it was limited, and you said maybe it'd be a oh, thing. Yeah. It yeah, seems we like got around to that one. <laughs> yeah, but it, I, I'm just saying that it seems like it's even more important now since you're adding all these extra instant buttons for melee and castles. Quite possible. Yeah. Yeah. Quite possible. Okay. You know, something something interesting that we're actually experimenting with on console, and this is kind of probably just a random just a random thing I thought I'd mention is actually changing it so that the um the right stick um is an extra move only slot. Um, so that that will that will allow you to do a move skill based on the stick. So basically, you know. Oh. Um, so you can use so you can use it to like if you've got like quick dodge or something, you can actually just tap the right stick and it will dodge in that direction. Um, that's cool. That's so that's good. like a, a special thing just for the console players that um, uh, <laughs> that we have there. Oh, yeah, actually, you know another thing about cool about quick dodge, by the way, um, it's just a little extra functionality is that um, if you hold shift while you press it, it actually goes backwards from your cursor. Um, so that's like a cool what? thing because it means that you can go um, if you're if, if you're like uh, slamming or whatever. Um, sorry, I was pushing the wrong button there. Um, if you're like um, you know slamming, you're hitting a bunch of monsters, then you can like go like that and then keep on slamming and like sort of do a tactical retreat there. Uh, from that's the, so cool. Because it's kind of a cool little feature of it. Um, have you guys considered talking about the console stuff for having something like yeah, you have a movement skill bound to like WSAD and then uh, you can use it separately from the mouse itself like the same way you dodge here but instead to the side if you were to click a for instance we we we, we actually experimented with this stuff um there was a few problems with it it didn't feel good um the problem is is that when you don't have an analog for that um like just the cardinal directions just wasn't quite wasn't quite doing it the other thing as well is we actually have quite limited button like bind space which is like kind of a bit of a concern like it does with just buttons um so yeah on pc it didn't really work so yeah we, we, we tried about the and, and and going back the, the going backwards thing ended up being um the most useful and also very easy to do because it's just a toggle with the shift um we might consider doing a few other things interesting with shift um as well in the future like if there's alternate modes for a few skills that happen on shift just for things where you wouldn't ordinarily i mean normally like a um uh, you know, some skills don't you don't really care about using shift with, and so they could unlock like an extra, like a slightly different mode for it, and it works particularly well with the dodge skill. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's quite fun. Having um, like a toggle fun. option would be great because, for example, just like essence drain contagion, being able to just toggle like shift contagion and stuff like that would be great for freeing up key space. Uh, don't we have some always attack without moving? Is there? In there? No, yeah. but what I mean by, so for example, if right click was essence strain, but shift right click was contagion. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, that was that, that's kind of what um, imagining, although I believe we we're talking about using control for it, like having another bind, a bind bar. Um, it, 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 it's, it's one of those things that I do actually want to do. It's just that like, it, it's surprisingly annoying because the way the binds work now is like a... a, a shitty thing that, like, it would, it would weirdly require doing a database migration items in order to fix this and it's like kind of a weird it seems like a strange thing um but it's because like, like the binds are locked on the item right yeah it is to do with that and it actually it doesn't feel like it actually it's actually 
one of the things that actually sucks right now is like pull it um if you've got something bound to left click and you pull it out of your um weapon and then you put it back in it like doesn't work properly and like this little bug like that is just like one of those things that's trolled me for years and i just haven't got around to fixing it so there will come there will come a time uh that, that i that i address all this stuff this was the melee patch and so you know we're fixing all of this stuff um but we will get time to do quick you know, question about uh, we'll quick dog dodge can it go up and down ledges ah uh, yes okay, okay cool. yep. and is it is it melee restricted uh no uh you can use it but you you are given it as a quest reward or for the classes for the fastness so i think i think it's um, uh, Duelist, Shadow Ranger, I think, gets I it. And I don't... Well, I mean, anyone can buy it, of course, from the shop. Anyone can buy it in the shop, but in terms of giving off it, it's those three. And then the Quick Gar... Uh, sorry, that one's called Iron Skin. No, Steel Skin. Steel Skin, sorry. <laughs> there was, there's just internal names that I still remember. And, um, Steel uh... Skin give it given to the Marauder and Templar. Uh, but then, of course, anyone can buy the, the off-class ones. And there's also a third one for um, the Casters. Um, they get uh, that's a low level movement skill which we haven't announced yet. But, um, and sort of... um, as you said, the caster movement skill and quick dash will share a cooldown, so you can't use them together. Yes, exactly. You can't use them. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So, um... mm, considering dash has an actual cooldown, was there some sort of? Did you guys consider at all adding cooldowns to? skills in general to movement skills in general or was that uh, never we didn't on the want table? To do that because um it's kind of like an important part of the feel i think like i think that would probably irritate people a lot way too much mm -hmm. um, i think the thing that we did where we're like there's like sort of built-in cooldown almost with the with the way that you have to re-jump when you cast it multiple times i think it's kind of a clever solution to that problem so you kind of get the instant if you're um you know if you're if, if you're doing it without the when you haven't done it recently so that's the kind of thing I think that sort of f fixes that without like being a, a thing where we need to actually have an actual cooldown on. Just a quick um, question, mm -hmm. since I hear people complain about this a lot from a development point of view in other games. When you made mm -hmm. that change, did you have a worry that returning players would be playing and their characters would feel different and they wouldn't be able to understand why? Um, there was a worry about that, yes. And I think that other people were more... like. I would say I'm a bit more cavalier with demanding that we fix things than some other developers are. But there were certainly people, okay, the animation cancelling especially, I'm like, I, we're having animation cancelling. And there was so much moaning about it uh, from, from people. <laughs> like, oh, like, especially when we first implemented it and there was like, we hadn't like fully perfected all the dead zones and everything. Then we had some, some some people in the studio were like, this will never feel as good. Like, I'm so used to this, the way it works. It's like, well, like, you know, you get, you get people who uh get ornery or ornery about that sort of stuff right but you just have to forge through it and like i think it's possible to always get to the point where it feels good to everyone like you just have to fix all the little border case and you'll just get that point the hard part is when you make a change and it isn't good yet or like it isn't good in a few situations yet with some people's way that they play um and then those people don't see a way that it could ever feel as good to them and so yeah, you just have to just keep on addressing it until it does and i think that even the people now in the studio like there was like a thing where like some people like they play for like for five minutes after they're used to it and like I keep on cancelling my skills accidentally, and then five minutes later they're like, oh, actually this is way better, you know. Like, it's, it's like yeah. it, it doesn't take very long to for the new way. And as I said, now that we've added like more of the dead zones and the sort of stuff that we've done to kind of address all that stuff has, has really improved it. Because um, like when we first did the animation cancelling, it was just like you can just cancel any time any skill, and like that was a problem. Like you just kept on interrupting yourself, and there was just yeah, it was it was bad. Um, but yeah working a bit more and you get to the point where it feels good now oh no i have so, huge uh, respect for that personally yeah. yeah yeah from a racing point of view honestly it sounds ridiculously fun it sounds yeah. like yeah. exactly yeah. the sort of thing you wanted to have yeah, yeah it's like if you're a good player you go 15 percent faster or maybe even yeah. 30 since you said it's a 15 and 15 window right uh it depends at the start well, and at the end it's it, the but the, the cancel at the start doesn't give you an like you just all you're doing oh, okay. at the start is just like you can cancel into a different skill if you change your mind kind of thing the cancel at the end mm -hmm. lets you move while effectively cooling down the attack animation yeah yeah okay you sort of yeah. see what i mean yeah yeah that's that's yeah. really cool yeah uh right. when it comes to when it comes to block because you said you're reworking a lot of uh like mob the way mobs work in general have you looked yeah. at abilities for instance like proximity shield maybe where it wouldn't fully block damage <laughs> <laughs> you know what? i'm actually gonna raise that tomorrow um because that's totally okay. an interesting thing yeah i gotta <laughs> because like i actually gonna should we make proximity shield not do as much 
yeah, not be 100% damage reduction. It's probably not just, a terrible. Just play melee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Just play melee is, is, a good, is a good answer to that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I will actually raise it because it's possible that there's a thing we should do about that. Um, no, I think, yeah, I think yeah, it's I mean, a cool mechanic. The, 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 it's just the problem when it's stacked up, you know, on oh, top I of know, each other. It's like 10 mobs. It's like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this, really there's frustrating. Actually, there's exactly that situation in the, in the trailer for uh, Legion. Um, mm. So... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So the um, we we are actually changing the abilities of a lot of monsters, by the way. So I told you how we're effectively um, you know revisiting all the X one through three monsters. Um, they're getting a lot of ability changes alongside that. Like a lot of them are getting new and new new stuff, and you know, all the boring monsters are getting better. Um, so that's a I mean that will be a big improvement. If the problem is proximity shield bubble stacking, if there's any way for the mobs to know what the mobs around them are doing. If you have one that has proximity shield up, you tell the other mobs not to cast it. Yeah, uh, that might. I don't know. If, I don't know if monsters can know what the other ones are doing though. Uh, they kind what of. What if you knock them back? They they kind of can, but it, uh, the checks could get expensive depending on how they're implemented. So you have to be a little bit careful. Like our, our our AI system has a huge number of conditions, and some of them we kind of say like don't use this unless it's a boss because um, they get expensive to check if you've got a lot of monsters involved. Like a random example of that is like Doresso has this like thing where he will. Um, he can dodge projectiles. Like he actually looks at all the projectiles that are coming towards him. He will dodge sideways if there's a projectile facing in his direction that would hit him eventually. Like that's the kind of AI check we can do if it's just a single boss, but you wouldn't want to put that on like every monster because like that would be super expensive to check. I know that you didn't want to wow. specifically talk about Legion, but is there anything with the new league planned around these like combat changes? Like does it take advantage of that? Um so like not really i mean like we wouldn't want to make a league where like people who weren't melee players <laughs> they weren't like you know being like have a good um but i mean legion i hope you I mean, we'll put it this way you guys are going to see the trailer tomorrow we'll think it's a it's a cool league um i think I, th I think it's a fun one i think it's a fun one personally um yeah the, and once again this, this trailer isn't that this this uh podcast isn't about that so you know you'll have to wait uh you'll have to wait tomorrow to see. <laughs> yeah turkey's really nonchalantly throwing yeah. that in there we didn't know the name of anything so i'm kind well, of freaking no, out it's actually funny like so take actually found out when we were doing the video test uh... before because he's because i accidentally he saw the the login screen and the log screen had the countdown on it um because it's like an unreleased version so, <laughs> so yeah he, i lost uh... I yeah. was betting on necropsy. I lost my bet. Right. <laughs> what can you do? Yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah, they just yeah. do this all on purpose, just to like snitch test us, kind of like okay. Well, well I don't know. I, I, Bex was enjoying her like troll session of like including one of every of the names of tweets. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> she likes to do this stuff. Um. All right. So um. I guess like how long have we been going here? Like how long? Have we been uh, because we've been going for moment. about just under an hour and a half. Um. Okay. Before well, uh, you know, if you... before we wrap up, though, one thing just for you personally, what yeah, yeah. melee skill are you most excited or like happy with now? Um, well, I have to say, cyclone. Cyclone feels great. Like cyclone. Cyclone mm -hmm. is, is is awesome. But I mean, yeah, that 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 that, that is like the easy answer. Like, it's like cyclone is just so fun. I what I what I want to see is if single target can actually be a viable build right like i want like that to be a thing right so that that, that if we can get to there i we, we, we will all have succeeded i mean of course all of me needs to feel good but that's just like i really i really wanted to solve those things which is like oh you can't do this because it's like this is like a, a problem that we had so you know i want to see heavy strike build <laughs> be a thing you know what i mean <laughs> like okay. like that's that's this that should be possible it's a thing um, it's just not really good yeah, With, yeah, exactly. like the changes to stun, and you said there were support gems coming that would support a like larger individual hit, but maybe yes, a slower yes, exactly. one yes. coming. Like yeah. that also seems like it leads into that. Now there's another multiplier yeah, for absolutely. stun. Like I don't know, absolutely. I could see crit heavy strike Starforge or something stunning bosses yeah. to death. I mean, people are stunning Shaper right now, so you guys yeah. gotta look into that cap. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I like. I mean, when we were talking about the stun stuff. Um, I mean, so Mark was telling me, yeah, you can stun anything if we're willing to invest in. Um, it's just that it's at the expense of damage. So effectively, you'll be able to invest less in stun, getting more damage, and actually make that stuff more viable, um, which is the the benefit you're getting. Um, so yeah, yeah. True. Um, one question. Well, I I, I, I have to ask. I have to ask about one of the major things you did mention: physical attacks being different from uh, elemental a little bit. Yep. But uh, any changes to bleed? That's maybe? what I was going to ask. Uh, 
There are bleach <laughs> changes. There are, but I don't know what they are. Sorry, I, <laughs> once again, okay. it's, it's not really my department. Um, they're, 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 they're rebalancing that stuff. They are rebalancing. Okay. Um, just bleed. okay. So, for, so bleed for, and this, um, this. bleed and also um, poison are being changed a little bit. I think there's there's some there's some, there's some minor tweaks so to that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. okay. That that was literally what I was going to ask. Um, okay <laughs> then. So so we don't keep you for too much longer. Just yes, no answer. If I start three point seven with a claw viper strike build, will I be happy? Um, if if the answer to that is not yes, then we fucked up. So okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll make sure <laughs> I will make sure that that is good. You know, this is what I'm, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Um, Octavian, do you have any final questions for Jonathan? No, I'm pretty happy. The spectral shield throw change is coming. It's, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I've been holding on to that particular one for a while. Well, thank you very much for that. And there was a lot more no cool stuff in there than I thought there would be. There were a few moments, right, just quickly. I don't know if you guys got it as well. It was kind of like when Neo finds out he's in the Matrix kind of moments. So you're like. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. When I when I realized the amount of time that must have gone into like reworking every enemy animation, well, maybe not literally all of them, but a, a vast right. majority of animations, yeah, yeah. so they actually align with what you're seeing in game. That's that is impressive in scope. Yeah, we've got a lot of we've got a big QA department now, and a lot of the, they get caught. <laughs> Oh, we, we lost Sorry, that. Sorry, you cut out after so QA. Saying, um, we've, got a, we've got a big QA department now, and so they get co-opted for these kinds of tasks. Um, you know, you basically, you've got like, oh, we've got like tons, like hundreds of like monsters to like add. So I mean, it was, because the thing is, there was also the, the um, didn't really too much, but that slow zone thing where you can slow the animation down, but get the, the, the build up, that requires like markup in the animation of like, what part of the animation do we hold on if we're going to hold to do the strike, as well as the, the markup for the actual um, damage areas and the getting getting the keyframes rate on the damage timing it is quite a lot of little metadata stuff going on there, right? So yeah, it's taking a while. I mean, I, 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 I'm not going to lie, it's not all done yet, right? So the, we've got like three weeks left <laughs> to like finish, <laughs> like finish doing all those with the rest of the monsters. I mean, I'm pretty sure we'll make some time, but yeah. So <laughs> it's uh, it's one of those things where it's like it's not actually holding back. Like you know, we can do testing without like finishing that stuff. So it's kind of like there's a big list of that stuff still to do, but we'll get there. Yeah. And also on that note, anything that you've seen today was on a test build. Any lagging oh, yeah. or there's, whatever. There's, there's a few bugs. You know, and stuff can change. Just, but, yeah, you know, it's fine. It'll it'll be all it'll be all. I really want to get I really want to get that interaction stuff just 100. Okay. percent Yeah. Well, on that, thank you for coming on, Jonathan, and I'm really looking no forward worries. to playing Legion. Yeah, <laughs> glad to hear it.